thank God this morning for his grace and goodness. Today is the first Sunday of the month of June, meaning we have successfully approached the middle of the year 2024. Would you put your hands together for God? That he has preserved us, he has protected us, he has kept us. And this morning, we are alive to testify of his goodness and faithfulness. Hallelujah. Amen. Join with me. I'd want to humbly ask Praise Dynamics to support me as we sing this song. Prepare our hearts once again to hear God's word. Holy words, long preserved for our walk in this world. They resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Words of life, words of hope, handed down to this age. In this world, wherever we roam, ancient words will guide us. Join me, let's sing it now. Damita, Mohinchon. Lord our God, we pray, speak to us. Speak to us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Dear frequent Christian friends, this morning we have a beautiful theme. Hear the voice of the Lord. Turn to a neighbor and say, hear the voice of the Lord. 
When we talk about hearing, there is a difference between that and listening. And we can say that listening is a more active form of hearing. So it is possible that I can hear you, but I would not be listening to you. Because in listening, I pay attention to what you are saying. The theme did not say, listen to the voice of God. It says, hear the voice of God. But I dare say, people of God, that it is not possible to hear God's voice and not listen to him. You can hear all other voices and choose not to listen. But if you hear God's voice, you'll surely listen. This morning, may God lead us through the path that we are able to hear his voice. And when we hear, may we indeed hear him in Jesus' name. Amen. So hear the voice of the Lord. The emphasis is on hearing. And it would so be because in the reading from 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 1 to 20, the very popular text of scripture that we so much adore, the young man Samuel was ministering under the supervision of Eli or Eli and the voice of the Lord came to him. He heard but could not identify But of course, by God's grace, having planted a man to direct him, he was assisted to recognize that was the voice of God. And so he could follow. But people of God, this morning there are some some issues that mark the event of this call to Samuel. And that is what I want us to give a bit of attention to. Obviously, The context, the background, the picture that was painted is what I have just mentioned as Samuel was ministering under the supervision of Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those times. Vision was not frequent. Again, the Bible said that Eli was lying in his place. And At that time, his eyes had grown dim, perhaps by old age, so that Eli could not see well. And again, a very important aspect of this background, this picture that is being painted to us is that the lamp of God, the Bible said that had not yet gone out. And Samuel was also lying in his place. And Samuel's place of lying was in the temple where the ark of the Lord was. Hallelujah. This, this narrative, Samuel it, it gives us some suggestions that are very important. First of all, stating that the lamp had not gone out yet could probably mean to us that the lamp was expected to go out at a particular point. And also could only be indicating to us the precise time that God might have spoken to the young man Samuel. However, according to Leviticus 24 verse 2 to 3, the people of God had to bring some beaten olive oil or olive oil that was beaten out of the olive tree fruit. And that was to be provided to keep the lamp burning. So that the shadow of God was that there was a particular place the Lord had designated that the lamp had to be positioned and overnight from evening to morning, the lamp had to keep burning. 
But if you look at the situation and you reflect on the fact that the Bible clearly stated that the word of the Lord was rare in those times, open visions were not there anymore, and you see the picture, what is happening in the temple, it is likely we can reason out with this to perhaps have some clues about what may be happening right or what may be happening wrong. So, while the text may be suggesting to us the, the precise time when the Lord might have spoken to Samuel, we also have this reason that we could glean out of it. With all the reasons that have been stated or we are, we are trying to identify reasons that would offer us why the word of the Lord was rare in those times why there were no open visions in the time it could be that the lamp of god was not receiving enough service as was the shadow that from evening to morning the lamp of god had to keep burning it says that the lamp of god had not gone out yet suggesting that <laughs> there's an expectation that it will go out some way somehow and that is one thing that we would have to closely follow and observe because if the lamp of god perhaps may not be receiving enough service as it ought to be and if you also fast forward the message god gave to samuel which indicated the neglect of eli in training his children and making sure that his children fell along good conduct and rather they ended up desecrating the temple and temple worship then this conjecture this idea we are driving from the text is likely to be true this morning the text is only one that is lending us to clues that we can only conjecture about and that's what we are actually working out so that the possibility is that the lamp of god and the service of god at the time was not receiving enough attention it was not receiving enough service as, as it had to be and that by implication we can say that God was not also receiving the attention he deserved and that could be a reason why his voice had become rare that is that could be a reason why visions had become rare so that there is a note to take from this that there is a serious spiritual deficit anytime true spiritual service and by true spiritual service what i mean is prayer bible studies and practical christian living if these things diminish when we lose out on these things and fail to give them enough attention as they deserve it is very likely that we can also suffer the situation where the voice of god can become rare to us Therefore, I want to encourage, let's not place excuses before us. Let us not always find a reason to say that because of this, I'm not coming for prayer meeting. That could be an indication that we will not be giving God enough service as he deserves. I will not come for Bible study for whatever reason. That could be an indication that we will not be giving God enough service as he deserves. And when care is not taken for these reasons, the word of God may become scarce to us. So, if there is even a reason why you think something is not going right, staying aloof is not the solution. The solution is that come around and let's fix it together. Hallelujah. Come around and let's fix it together. In those times when that maxim came about, fix the country, fix the country, you had some of the responses that were given. And for me, the richest of the responses is that don't expect anybody to fix the country. Somewhere, somehow, some of us are also contributing to the rot 
that is happening and so when we sit down and say politician fix the country at least if you could do your part and the politician would not even do his part it could shift us to a point and so always sitting aloof and thinking that someone else should do it is a great error and a deficit in the house of God come around come together let's fix it together ni won sole no susu ake ene bajogba ya sole mo mi e no ba na egbe o jaje ni ko vie here wo fe wo ba kwe ni wo ba fe the complaints don't help hallelujah so let's go on we've seen the issues around the the calling of of Samuel and all that the possibilities that would have led to the situation and let me remind you again that the theme is here the voice of the Lord. So indeed, even in spite of all these likely reasons that we would have, we, we have gleaned out of the text for which the word of God was scarce, what is so beautiful is that God could still find a reason to reveal his word to Samuel. And remember, Samuel has been dedicated or had been dedicated by his mother already. So his service in the temple was to say that this is a fulfillment of my promise to you. Take him and make use of him. But there is a beautiful reality about the life of Samuel, which for me can be a lesson for us all. Because as much as Samuel had been dedicated to this service, the name Samuel, is, it, it comes across with a striking meaning. Because the name Samuel comes from the the, the Hebrew root word Shama. Shama. And that is where we get the name Samuel. And Samuel, Shama, means to hear intelligently. Samuel, Shama, the root word from which we gain the name Samuel, means to hear intelligently. And often, the implication of this hearing is attention and obedience. And that's what exactly we see show forth in the life of Samuel. For which we can therefore safely conclude that the heart of Samuel was ready to listen, to hear the voice of God. And that is why, though the voice of God was rare in the time, Samuel was found a ready vessel through whom God could speak. Beloved, May we, not all be, we may not all be called Samuel. However, we can cultivate that nature, that attitude of attention and obedience as Samuel exhibited through his name and through his action. We can also cultivate the same. So that even when God's voice becomes scarce in our times, we shall be available to hear the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. And appreciating this, when we talk about the voice of God, it's so important. So the second Corinthians 4, verse 6 to 7, suggests to us that God's word within us is a treasure, and we are jars of clay containing the word of God. God himself inspires his word, but we have this treasure. Go back to verse 6 for me, please. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the, of, of, of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Then, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. People of God. So it is very clear out of all that God is telling us in his word that he has inspired his word. He has shown a light in us. And that light brings us his word. When we talk about God's word in our times, Jesus Christ is a total embodiment of God's word. And Jesus Christ, when we have accepted him, we have received God's word right into our hearts. Which is a reason why we can say that we are jars of clay contained containing this imperishable and eternal glory, excellent grace and powerful means of God's 
working in our lives in the in the in the in the in the word of God that we have received. So it is so important to us the excellence of God's power at work in his word which belongs to God emphasizes that we are jars of clay we are mere mortals we are in this lowly state in which it pleased God to place in us this deposit of his power so that we would surely recognize and acknowledge that he to God belongs the power to God belongs the glory and yet it has pleased him to keep these things in us. Say, I am a jar of clay, but I contain his eternal glory. I am a jar of clay, but I contain the power of God. And God made it so. His word, his voice, Jesus in our hearts is evident of this manifestation. Hallelujah. So we must hear the voice of the Lord because the word of God alone surpasses every other word. God's word is alone over and above every other word. As we read from the gospel of Mark 2, uh, 23 down to 3, 1 to 6, the gospel reading for today tells us of the time that Jesus was going along with his disciples and as they, they, they walked through a grain field, the disciples began to pick some ears of corn and, and as they did that, the ph Pharisees, Mokuke, far I see, the Pharisees began to accuse Jesus. Why are your disciples working on the Sabbath day? The Bible said that Jesus Christ looked to them and asked them, do you not remember when David and his men went into the temple? Hungry as they were, they took of the, the show bread, the bread before the presence of God, and they ate. And the high priest at the time would even also allow them, indeed, he was able to defeat them with that trajectory with that sub submission he made and they will still watch him closely because thereafter the bible tells us that he went on to the synagogue and there was a man with a shriveled hand and they were watching to see what he would do now he did not pay attention to them but he calls the man and he asked the man what is better to do to heal on the sabbath or not then he looks at the man and says stretch out your hand and the man is healed. And they could still not say anything to Jesus, but only went around to plot how they would arrest him and terminate him. But this story, people of God, represents to us how tradition can become a stumbling block in the way of people so that hearing God's voice is impeded. And so... The way the Pharisees had positioned themselves would never allow them to see, to understand any good that the Lord is bringing into their way. And if ever there is anyone better at interpreting the law, it was obviously not the Pharisees, it was Jesus Christ himself. So there he could tell them, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. The issue is that tradition was becoming a, 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 an impediment in the way of these people. And when we behave that way, anything that must be done by reason and anything that must be done out of love and obedience to God would not be done. And therefore, by tradition, what is right will be taken away. But God's word, God's word is ultimate and final. And God's word is what we must seek to receive. We must seek to hear. And as we do that, we are careful not to entertain what we feel and know. The, the things that have been established that sometimes come in the way of hearing God's voice. I don't have time to lay down so many examples, but I want to bring your attention to just one. What they call modernity and civilization and how it is confronting our ability to hear God's voice. 
me a hingbe gbele a hun wa ke bi ane tafla che to ike koloi ameka ameke ba wo and all these are coming along with this idea of modernity and civilization when i become civilized i learn to know my right and when i come to know my right i have the chance to choose for myself whether i want to be a man or a woman i have the chance to choose for myself whether as a man i want to marry a man or i want to marry a woman and all these are the error the stupidity that these times have brought to us so that even when god tells you i hate these things they cannot hear and that is why we must rise up become active in hearing god's voice become active in hearing the voice of God so that we can obey and we will not be thrown off and we are going to stand true and right and the glory of God as he has given in his word and giving us knowledge of when we are able to hear his voice become jars of clay in which this glory shall reside so that even if no one shall bear God's voice even if no one shall hear God's voice, at least you and I, in all obedience, in all readiness to hear his voice, would be able to manifest his glory and be the true children of God, light of the world, salt of this earth, that we ought to be to his glory. With the voice of God, we are guided we are directed and we are taken to the destination where God wants to take us. I humbly pray and beseech all of us this morning that like Samuel, may we avail ourselves that the word of the Lord, the voice of God, the power of God, the glory of God shall reside in us when we have received, when we have heard, so we can pursue and we can bring glory to the name of the Lord. In the name of God who alone is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Say Amen. Say to a brother or a sister, hear the voice of the Lord. <laughs>